Good morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another uh, Wednesday class for Transform Your Health the Shiatsu Way. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not Cliff. Um, uh, Cliff is away because it is his birthday week off. So um, feel free to say hello in the chat. We have Kat with us covering the chat and all the kind of technical stuff. I am down here, masked up. <laughs> <laughs> hello, everyone, from wherever you are. Please say hello. Um, and, uh, and share a little happy birthday to Cliff, um, taking his well-earned time off. Uh, so I'll be here with you today. We're going to be going through the regular exercises uh, that we go through. We're going to be doing a lovely check-in with ourselves at the beginning, uh, like we normally do. Um, we'll do a scan. We'll check in with our three burning spaces, uh, as they're called, three areas where we generate the chi within our body. Um, and then we will take on our exercises from there. Fantastic. So first of all, first thing we're going to do is uh, a scan throughout the body and so if everyone would like to stand up when you're ready so I know you're all still coming in but bring yourself to standing up and find yourself just sort of standing loosely on the ground give yourself about hip to shoulder width apart with your feet and just let your attention become slightly relaxed and we're going to bring our attention to the top of our head. Just notice how the space feels actually just above your head. Um, and we've still got people coming in, so we'll let them kind of join in. Hello, everyone who's just joining. So we're just going to do a scan all the way through the body. And if you haven't done this before, um, imagine it's a bit like a sort of a, um, a photocopying machine or an MRI scanner and it's like it's just coming down through and we're just wanting to be interested in things. We're not having to look for oh what's the difficult, what's the problem, we're just being interested in what we're finding. Okay, so we bring our attention to the top of the head and then bring our attention right to the actual skull, the feeling of the top of the head. What's that like? Scan down around the sides of the head, front and back of the skull. And then notice the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, your face. Keep scanning down so you've got now your neck and your throat. Notice what it's like through to the shoulders and the upper back, and the top of the chest. Keep scanning down. You may want to go inside as well. What's it like inside your body, inside your arms, down through the rib cage? Is it different from when you were going through the chest? Now go through the elbows, your diaphragm. Keep scanning down through the belly, got organs in here. What's it like in the spine, hips and pelvis? Just noticing anything interesting. Going through to the upper leg, the thighs, where you've got the longest bones in the body, nice long muscles. The knees, what are the knees like? Biggest joints in the body. We're going to come back to the knees for our point of the week. Keep going down through the calf muscle. Keep going down through the lower leg to the ankle. Keep going down through the feet, all the tiny little bones and sinews in the foot. The sole of the foot. And then the ground. And then let your attention come back up a little and just have a quick idea of two or three things that were interesting to you. Now, we're going to do one other kind of scan, which is a very quick one. So if you didn't get much of anything from that, then here's another way of trying it. And you can see which way you prefer. So after three, 
it's like we're going to do a like a flash photograph of our whole sort of self uh, or a very quick kind of just oh how am i doing so close your eyes bring your attention in and go one two three whole self how am i feeling notice anything and then come back okay this is where we make a quick note so if you've got a piece of paper I have mine. You can make a note of any interesting areas that you picked up. So for me, I had personally tension across back of the neck and shoulders. Um, a little bit in the lower back. Yeah. So this is what I'm working with on that. So hopefully you found something. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up our first poll now. And I'd like to ask you, um, which of these best describes your scan? So when you've finished, if you haven't made a picture, that's absolutely fine. Have a mental note. So which of these best describes your scan? Well and balanced. It blocked or obstructed, it weak or tired, and uh, hot or agitated or cold and frozen. And this can give us a really good idea of not only how we're feeling ourselves a bit more clearly, but how we can work with ourselves to help ease that. Fantastic. More and more answers coming in. So it's looking like there's a bit more of the blocked and, and obstructed. Um, fairly even with a bit weak and tired, so we'll see if we can work on both of those. Um, nice to see that there's a nice amount of well-balanced people out there. Well done, everyone. Uh, and let's see if we can help that along with the class. Um, now we're just going to also go through a quick second scan. Now this is something Cliff has done before a lot. Uh, so hopefully you've got another piece of paper, and this is going through the three burning spaces. So this is the upper space here, the chest, and then below the diaphragm to the navel, you have the middle burner, and then below the navel down to the pelvis, we have the lower burner. Um, I won't go into great detail about them, but the idea is that in each of these spaces are where we produce the chi within our body, you could say like that, the energy of our body. So on your piece of paper, make three even spaces. Um, and then we're going to take a moment to just check in with each of these spaces. So this is going to give us another dynamic of how to observe and feel ourselves. So when you're ready, We're going to start off with the lower burner, and it's incredibly important, the lower burner. This underpins all of the health, in a sense, within our body. We can be more direct with different areas and different organs and different meridians, uh, but this is the sort of underpinning. Okay. So bring your attention between your navel and your pelvis, and you've got bladder, kidneys, intestines, all good stuff. And just notice how it's feeling, maybe one hand on your lower back. What's it like inside this space? Hmm. Be interested, make a mental note. Now we're going to bring our attention up to a little bit where we've got above the navel and to the diaphragm or the lower part of the rib cage. So in this space, we have more of our digestive organs and the liver and the gallbladder. I had to think which side they were on then. <laughs> the liver and the gallbladder uh, on our right side. Um, and they have a strong effect through the middle banner. And those are the organs of the element we are in at the moment, which is the wood element. Okay, so let's just check in with our middle banner. How's this feeling? 
What's it like? Just be interested. Maybe you get an image, maybe words, sounds, metaphorical image. Anything is okay. Maybe you don't get anything at all. That's also okay. Make a mental note. Have a sense of, is it any different from the lower burner? And then we're going to come up to the upper burner. Now, this is, of course, from the diaphragm up to the top of the chest. So we're just going to take our moment to bring our attention inside our chest and just notice how that's feeling. Now, you can put your hands on your chest if you like. What's it like? Hmm. Okay. And then when we're ready, make a quick note on your piece of paper, if you have one, uh, about what the three burning spaces were like. Um, and in a moment, we're going to do our second poll to see um, which of the three burners you would most like to focus on with work today. Uh, so if you're still doing a picture, that's fine. Um, I didn't get much from the middle burner, I have to admit. Um, there we go. So I've got my images down. I know what I need to work with. Frankly, my upper burner was nice and open, but my lower burner very much needs a bit of strengthening. Um, and possibly I wasn't noticing much in the middle burner because maybe I'm a bit blocked and obstructed as well. There we go. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, poll. Um, for which of the burners do you want to work on most today? Is it the lower burner, the middle burner or the upper burner? Uh, lots of answers coming in. This is fantastic. It's pretty even today. Very interesting. Ooh. Oh, almost exactly uh, even between the lower and the middle, but very close behind is the upper. Everyone's pretty balanced in terms of the burners. That's kind of wonderful to see. Um, I feel like, in general, there's a little bit of a new step coming in with the start of the kind of feelings of spring nearby um, and a bit of a kind of a new step, a new start, perhaps. So we're going to do a nice amount of starting with the lower burner. We will definitely do some with the middle burner because, as I said, wood element has a strong effect and it comes from the middle burner. So we're going to be focusing on that today. We'll also focus on the point of the week, which I'll show you later, on the liver channel. Before we get started, though, I would really love us to just have a moment to connect together as a group, as a class. Um, and I, I feel like that would be a lovely way to start our session. Perhaps if we have time, we can end it that way as well. So we're going to start off. Take a moment, again, standing, nice and relaxed. So we've checked in with how we've been feeling individually, and that's lovely. We've had a little bit of an idea of how everyone else is feeling and what they're wanting to work with, and that's absolutely lovely too. So now, take your attention just inside again. Relax, feel a bit of your center, feel the weight of your body on the ground. And we're going to imagine ourselves in a great big circle. Doesn't matter how many people, in a great big circle of people though. So just take a nice moment to imagine standing there and from either side of you, there's people going out and around and it's all of us who are here now in this group. We're about to start a session of working with our health and appreciating it and appreciating everyone else doing the same. And also a moment of thanks as well. Just, you know, thank you, Cliff, for setting this class up and for keeping it running for so long. And happy birthday to him. 
So a lovely group feeling to start our day. We'll have three nice deep breaths. So after three, we're going to breathe in. One, two, three, breathing in. And relax and breathe out. <sighs> One more time, breathing in. And relax and breathe out. <sighs> okay. It was only two breaths. We'll leave it at that, though. Then let's get started with our class of exercises. First things first working on the lower burner. As usual, as Cliff always says, the lower burner, very important, underpins the health of the body. So let's get started there. So we're going to focus on this lower area. As you can see, we've got the navel down to the pelvis, the lower back and the kidneys, all in this area. So if you can reach round to your back, put a hand on the back, and put a hand on your front. And if you really want to get a good idea, a, a sort of naturally open hand, and you can have your thumb just on the navel, and the, the palm of the hand should pretty much be just about in the middle-ish. Now, if you can't reach around to your back, just put your hand over the other hand. We're gonna take a moment to just feel like you're zapping energy in or you're pouring nice, warm, strengthening, sort of nourishing fluid into your lower burner. And try and have that feeling of pouring in all the way through to the back. And if you can reach around to the back, pour in through the back, inside to the middle. Almost like a feeling of getting right into your core. Hmm. Really sinking that feeling in. Get a feeling, it's really important to get a feeling, a sense for you of what your lower bone is like and the feeling of pouring uh, energy or nice warm nourishing fluid in and settling. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is do some circles down in this lower burner area. So I'm not doing the whole of my tummy, just the lower area. And we're just bringing a bit more energy, a bit more vibrancy with this circling. So you can circle a little, little more quickly if you like. And it's just kind of building a bit of energy up, building a bit of energy up, getting it moving, getting it moving inside. And trying every time you do a circle, trying to imagine that movement and that energy kind of spiraling right through, through to the back. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely work. Just a couple more circles, nice, vibrant energy pouring in. Okay, and then, sorry, hold my jumper up. And then if you can, reach around to the back, just rubbing down the kidneys to the top of the buttocks. And if you can't reach around to the back, then just doing some gentle bouncing on your legs and kind of feeling a little bit of loosening of the lower part of your spine. Almost imagine your hips become like loose joints. So as you're sort of gently bouncing, you're just feeling the lower part of your body jiggle. If you can reach round to the back, then just, you can use that bouncing so that you're not having to work the hands so hard. There we go, and it's just rubbing around the lower back and the kidneys. It's really important to help your lower back be nice and open, it really helps. So the other thing that we can do is shake out the legs, because obviously connection with the ground up into the lower burner has to go through the legs really. So shake out the legs a little bit. If you need to use the wall, that's absolutely fine. Steady yourself, 
Feel the looseness of those long muscles in the thigh. You can use your hands if you want to, it helps. Loosen up the knee joint. Loosen up the calf muscle, wobbling the muscle away from the bone. Loosen up the ankle joint. And then with the foot, sort of plop it down. Start to lean into the foot, stretch it out a little bit. Lean into the foot to stretch it out a little. And then just do some nice small circles. So you're really getting all the bones and sinews opened up a little. We'll come back to the feet in a minute, so we don't have to do this for long. Just to get a little bit of opening. Okay. Just notice for a moment the difference from one leg to another. What's it like? You probably notice you have one nice, big, fluffy, warm leg and one leg that feels like it needs to be open. So let's just shake out the other one. So again, use the wall if you need it. So we're loosening through the hip joint, the long muscles of the thigh, which you can wobble by hand if you want to, the knee joint, shaking the calf muscles away from the bone. You've got the ankle joint and the foot. Plop the foot down. A little bit of a stretch out. And then come back. Just wiggle the toes. Stretch out. And come back and wiggle the toes. And then do a few circles. Lovely. Now, I really enjoy those foot circles. I think they're very important. So, gets you set up. Always take care of your feet because you rest on them on the ground. We spend our life moving about. Hopefully, we're not spending too much of our life sitting down. And so, your feet are pretty important. You know, everything goes through them. So, they're good things to take care of. So, the last thing we're going to do with the lower burner just for now is just do some light tapping, just very light tapping around the lower burner, inside of the hips. So you've got from your belly button down to the edge of the pelvis, the pubic bone. Just some light tapping to sort of wake up. And then along the edges of the hips here, where you put some of your intestines. We don't want to be doing strong hitting, frankly, at the moment. We just want to be doing some light tapping. It's like waking up. Good morning. Here we are. And you can come round if you want to. And if you can reach a bit of the lower back, that's great. The buttocks, the sacrum, if you can reach round to it. Otherwise, you can just come round to the backs of the lower legs. Just tap down the backs of the lower legs a bit. Down to the back of the knee. And then we can come, if you turn your feet outwards a bit, that really helps. And you're coming up on the very inside of the leg. Nice deep breath in and relax and breathe out. <sighs> Bring your attention into the lower burner now. How's that feeling now? Maybe a little bit of difference. Personally, mine feels a little bit more open and the energy feels a little bit more stable, but we can do a little bit more to help it. We're going to do some feet work. Now, I'll come a little bit closer and just rearrange the camera a bit. Here we go. Oh, thank you very much. So, is that good there? That's perfect. Thank you, Kat. Don't worry, everyone. I am well masked up. <laughs> so, we're going to do the bottom of the feet. We have that um, uh, one third of the way down. Um, in the just below the ball of the foot, and you can see on my feet, it's very pale here, and they're very red across the ball of the feet. 
And that's that sort of just underneath the ball of the feet, pale spot, that's pretty much where kidney one, if you remember the spot, that's where we're aiming for. So you can just get in there and really scrunch, nice kind of massagey scrunch. Um, if you know more about the projection of energy from shiatsu or uh, energy massage, then you can have a sense of directing energy up through that kidney one point into the leg, into the pelvis, into the lower back. It's a lovely feeling. <sighs> it's just nice to just open up the feet a bit. And you're just working around opening between the bones of the feet. So I'll just shake it like that. You're kind of holding a metatarsal and then kind of wobbling them either side. I get a bit of movement. Stretch out the toes a little bit. And then on the bottom of the foot here, to make a loose fist and just Hitting the bottom of the foot down to the heel. That's it. From the ball of the foot, come down to the heel. One more time. Lovely. And then squeeze just around the heel. There we go. Lovely. And maybe squeeze around the ankle a little bit. We're going to come back to this in a moment, in a moment, and work uh, up through the lower leg towards the point of the week. But first, we will just come to the other foot and help to open up the other foot. So I'm going to take my other sock off so you can see the foot again. So we've got this, the foot, one third down, you can see clearly the sort of more red, and then you can see the more pale. And that's where we're aiming for. So scrunching, getting nice kind of squeezing feeling going into that, into that sort of kidney one point. And kidney one is a great place for very yin quality. So very calming, cooling, bringing us back down to the ground. Uh, it can help to calm the mind in the evening as well, to help with sleep, all that sort of thing. Um, you can look back over our um, first uh, um, um, health bishiatsu way uh, one back in winter time, and we did kidney one as our point of the week. There'll be more information on it there. Uh, now you can do a general work around the foot, opening up all those lovely little bones and sinews in the feet. Send a bit of energy up into the lower burner by holding in and almost like you're draw, drawing up and projecting through the leg up into the pelvis and into the lower back. Ah, stabilizing and nourishing. Very lovely. Okay, now we're going to do loose fist again. Go down from the ball of the foot, down through the middle of the foot, into the heel, and again. And last time. Lovely. And then just squeeze around the heel and the ankle. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to get us to do a little bit of direct work now on the liver channel. Um, and this is going to take us from uh, working the lower burner into being able to work with the middle burner because liver channel uh, comes from the liver organ, which is in the middle burner. Um, but it goes through the legs, so it's also helping with the lower aspect of our body, so that's all good. So you may remember, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, that we did the point liver one, which is at that inner corner of the toenail. You may be able to see roughly there. 
So we're going to come from the inside of the big toe, and you're going between the two bones in the feet here, and that uh, has a lovely point, liver three. You may remember that one if you were here last week, I believe. Fantastic point, but it can be tender, so go sensitively. And you've also got, often liver points are where you will find tendons that are quite obvious uh, or large or at least very sort of important in some way. So you'll find a, uh, a tendon here, I believe you can see that tendon just there on my ankle. So that get in on that tendon and give it a good squeeze. And then we're going to come up the inside edge. I'm going to lift my trouser leg up. Excuse me, everyone. Uh, inside edge of the bone here. And it's imagine that the feeling you're looking for is a bit like a young sapling wood. So just squeezing up till you're about two thirds of the way up. So squeeze this sort of like a young tree growth, two thirds of the way up your leg. And then you come out a little bit in the calf muscle. I'm showing you in a bit of detail, really. Um, the same kind of detail we would do in college, actually. But you'll find that it's a little bit more uh, specific because when we get at this level of the calf muscle up to the knee, you'll find that this bit of bone, which is still part of the low leg, in that line, is where we get to the point of the week, liver eight. And Kat, if you could bring up the slide, please. I believe we've got a lovely image. It's right at the end. It's right at the end. So we'll just flick through the slides um, until we get to, here we go, liver eight. Named Chuchuan. Crooked Spring, also known as Spring at the Bend or Crooked Stream. Now we'll come back to that name in a second, but let's just get a hang of where this is because some people find it tricky. Now by feeling alone, we can often get it because it's quite tender and sore for a lot of people. But when you bend your leg, you'll notice that there's a knee crease here. So I'll come a little bit closer you'll see that there's a knee crease here called the popliteal crease. And at the end of that crease, you'll be able to feel a bit of the bone of the, of the leg, of the lower leg. So basically a bit of substance behind it. Um, now, if you open up your leg a little bit and you really kind of press around, you'll feel that it's sort of like you've got a couple of tendons, very fine, some of them. Um, but it can be quite sore, so don't press too hard. Uh, the semi-membranosis semi and semi-tendinosis, I believe they're called. In fact, they're written on the thing there. <clears throat> and that, essentially, between those two tendons, at the very head of the bone there, at the end of the knee crease, that is liver eight. So when it's called crooked stream or crooked spring, it's sort of describing almost where to find it. You have this, this channel, the liver channel, like a stream, and then there's a bend in the stream because we bend our leg and it helps us to find it. Also, you've got this bend here and it's right at the edge of it. So it's being described where it is. But to call it a spring at the bend gives us an idea of the feeling of the point. There's like a, a volume of water there, or volume of liquid. Now, it's really important to have a think of this, um, because, thank you very much, because this is a great point for getting into the quality of the blood. Uh, now, all of the points, elbows or knees, um, have a fantastic effect on the blood, especially the cooling the blood. So that's one of the main things you can think is cooling, but also nourishing. So it nourishes the blood. So you can give a squeeze here on the inside edge of your knee, thinking, hmm, nourishing the blood. 
And if you want to think cooling, if you've been hot and agitated, then think cooling in the lower burn. Now, to give you an idea of cooling and also clearing, then I actually worked this with a client who had cystitis. So that's something that's um, essentially like a, a hot and sort of blockage and difficulty in the lower burner. I worked this point along with some other bladder and kidney work, and it really helped to clear the cystitis. So there's an idea of a way that it can be worked uh, and the effect. Okay, so we've got that lower leg along the bone here, comes out into the calf muscle, inside edge of the knee where the crease is, and you've got where those tendons are, our point of the week, nourishing the blood, clearing in the lower burner, and helping the tendons, easing the tendons, especially around the knee. Okay, let's do the other side. So we're coming up from the big toe, and we're just doing some squeezing in between the two bones here, up into the ankle, there's that tendon we found before, which is just above the ankle bone. And then it comes to that lovely willowy kind of feeling of a young tree growth in our leg. I would enjoy the idea of that. And we're coming up about two thirds of the way. And then we've got the calf muscle into the knee where we have our point of the week again. I'll just show you one more time. Knee crease underneath the substance of the knee, so where the bone is. We've got tendons in there. If you find yourself going underneath the knee rather than on the side of the knee, underneath the knee, there's less sort of solid substance and you'll find that you're into a kidney point. So we're on the side of the knee here. Oh, it feels very different when you get into it. Um, for me, it's very sharp and sore. Clearly a sign I have a bit of obstruction and I need to work it. Okay, we can give that a bit of a stroke. A little bit of a tap. Okay, we're ready, we can stand back up. I'm gonna leave my socks to the side and you can carry on tapping up inside the leg. And again, this is the liver channel inside of the leg. If you want to do one side at a time, and then the other. And then that comes up, thank you very much, Kat. Okay. Through the through the hips and to the ribs. Through the hips and into the ribs. Okay. Oh, I'm going to need to take my jumper off. I'm finally warmed up. So, now we've started to get into the middle burner. Now, it's been said before, one of the things that's really great for the lower burner is having a strength, a feeling of strength and steadiness. And for the middle burner, a feeling of fluidity of movement, free expression. <clears throat> Excuse me. So take a moment to stand there, notice how it feels. In fact, you can really actually get your fingers in there, to find the edge of your rib cage and just feel in, just underneath the rib cage. Notice what it's like. Notice what it's like, not only to your fingers, but also as you press it. So probably if you have some obstruction, it'll feel a little bit like yucky or tight. Um, if there's some weakness, it'll feel a little bit hollow, and like your fingers are just sinking in. Now at this point, we're going to do some, uh, we'll do a little bit more tapping to wake up uh, the sides, and then we'll do a little bit of twisting. I really want you to take your time with it, okay? And I want you to do it in your way, whatever's best for you. 
So for instance, if you are wanting to clear obstruction, if it's feeling a bit tight and yucky, then you can give the sides of your body a good tapping, and we're going to go down the outside and I'll show you. If that's um, a bit too vigorous for you, or you're wanting more strengthening, then you can do some sort of more like rubbing around the sides of the rib cage and some more kind of easing down the sides of the legs. So we're going to, I'll give you a chance for you to do whichever's best for you. Uh, and we'll do the same when it comes to the twisting as well. Okay. So first of all, right under the rib cage, uh, right under the armpit, sorry, going through the rib cage, just some tapping. You're coming all the way down, both sides. And if you really need it, you can stretch. But this is only if you've got a lot of uh, tightness and you're wanting to clear blockage. And then around the hips, really great. Really helps to move stagnation blockages. You can use a loose fist if you need a bit more power in there. Or just a light slapping through the hips. And the outside edges. Or you can just nicely smooth it out. Like you're just smoothing the flow of G, the flow of energy. Whichever is best for you. Go all the way down to the feet. And then coming back up the inside as we just did a moment ago with the liver. Take a moment to focus on that liver eight point, nourishing the blood, clearing the lower back into the ribs. One more time. Down the ribs, smoothing down, tapping down, smoothing down, into the hip joint. All the way down to the peak. Back up the inside edge. Take a moment with liver eight. Remind yourself where it is on the inside. Nourish the blood, clear the lower banner. Up hips and ribs. Lovely. <sighs> One more thing we're going to do, a bit of twisting. So you really want to have your feet facing forwards here, not so much turned out, feet facing forwards. Even if you have a little bit of a feeling of like your shins are slightly sort of turning in whilst your knees aren't, that's almost a good thing. You don't want to, you know, really twist and, and cause discomfort, but you do want a little bit of a feeling of feeling nicely planted with your feet facing forwards. So bend your knees a little bit, Soften in your hips, and then start to turn your hips. You're not leaning over, you're staying in the middle. Just turning your hips, and then letting your arms swing, and then turning so you're getting a bit more swing going, and then let the rest of your body turn above the hips, so you feel the twist in the middle of the body, and again, take it as slow as you need. And you're trying not to let your knees kind of collapse. You would want to kind of have your knees pretty much staying nice and strong and sort of sinking into the ground. You're letting the rest of the body swing around and just loosen up. Feel that fluidity and that ease and flexibility, and that's important in the wood element. Flexibility of growth, of movement and direction. Freedom of expression and flow of the blood and the energy within us, as well as the freedom of expression of our emotions. Ah, there we go. And then let that just start to come to a close. And ah, relax. Just take a moment to notice how's my middle bone feeling now? Hmm. Maybe a little bit different to before. Mine's certainly feeling more open and a bit more vibrant. I can notice it a bit more. Nice. 
So then we're going to go to the upper burner now. So the upper burner, <clears throat> as we've uh, done before, has some qualities like the heart and the lungs really in governing it. So we're going to do some work to help open those. First of all, do a bit of tapping around the top of the chest, light tapping. And whilst you're doing the tapping, notice how it feels in your chest. Does it feel like this is reverberating a bit much? Does it feel like there's some pain, tension, stiffness, or maybe phlegm in your lungs? Um, because that gives you a good idea of how to carry on working. So is it a bit obstructed by something? Is it a bit weak and a bit feeling like, you know? We've got a lot of that going on in the world at the moment, obviously. And so helping to open up and get a bit more of a feeling of space and like we can be in our own boundaries is going to really help. And feel a bit more inspired. So starting to tap across the top of the chest, really at the top of the chest. And then we can tap down the inside aspect of our arm. Do the same on this side, tap down the inside aspect of our arm, chest, and then inside sort of, we're not going right underneath the arm, but just like the middle, really, middle to outer, um, sorry, and that's just getting a little bit of activation in the yin qualities that govern the chest. Okay, now we're going to do a couple of stretches with breaths. So the first one starts stretching forwards. Cliff's done this many times. So you're stretching forwards with your arms and breathing in, almost like you're going to die. <laughs> so stretch the arms and the shoulders forwards and breathe in. And then as you breathe out, relax the shoulders. Let the shoulders just relax. Keep the arms level with the ground and then just open the hands backwards a little bit more, kind of with the middle finger especially. Okay, we'll do that again. Breathing in, stretch forwards. Maybe feel a stretch in the backs of the arms and shoulders, and then relax the shoulders, let them sink back. Arms level with the ground, level with the shoulders. Fingers point backwards a little, really stretching. One more time. This is stretching the heart protector or the heart governor. <sighs> so allow a feeling of peace and calm and like it's helping just the heart be able to relax and be governed. Um, not governed, um, circulate. All that needs to circulate, whether it's the blood or your mind or your feelings. Okay, now we can do the lungs. So this is a little bit more of a stretch. We're going to link our thumbs together. Stretch out and point your index fingers behind you. And we're going to take a nice deep breath in. When we breathe out, we're going to bend from the hips. And just go as comfortable for you. We're not looking for a huge stretch here, just to feel a stretch position. And staying in this position, point your index fingers up at the ceiling and breathe in again. And just relax. And just see how far you relax into it. Now, if you've got a sore back, don't push it. Just keep your attention in more in your hips and shoulders. Last breath in. Pointing at the ceiling with your index fingers. <sighs> Relaxing, breathing out. Now let your hands sink onto your sacrum. Bend your knees nice and strong so that the weight comes back into your legs and you can roll back up. And we'll just finish with like a nice yawn. Ooh. Lovely. Maybe one more of those. Nice yawn stretch, like we're just waking up. Ooh. 
Okay. Ah, oh, finish the three burning spaces uh, and all of the channels that we've done with a bit of a shake out in general. So we're just going to shake out in general. So you can shake out your legs, shake out and get blood moving around your hips and your pelvis and your body and your arms, anything. Do it all at the same time if you want to. You can even do your face if you remove your glasses. <laughs> Don't worry about sounding silly. You're probably in your own home, so it's fine. There we go. Always good to get a little bit of that going. If you take your glasses off, put them back on. Just get another overall feeling of how you are now. Mm, great. Fantastic. Now, I'm going to take us through just last couple of exercises to bring the session to a close. How much time have we done? Great. Um, and that is, thank you very much, Kat. Uh, and that is, we're going to get a sense of our heaven and earth connection. Now, if you've been to any classes before, I'm almost certain you will have done this before. If you've done any Qigong practices or Tai Chi, you may well have done something of this as well. Um, so what we're going to do is have a sense of the above. Now, whether you want to call that the heavens or the cosmos, space, the universe, whatever, it's absolutely fine, whatever label or use of term one has to connect you with a feeling of above. So there's lots of that sense of space, of light, of the movements of the heavens. I have a sense of that above and allow a sense of a, a connection to just be coming down through you and a sense of the qualities that, that you can sense from above, the space, the light, and if you have to use your imagination, Use your imagination. It is the most powerful tool we have almost. So imagine then that space, that light and the movement within your body and connect that into the ground. So it's almost like we're sharing it with the ground. Even if you're upstairs in a building, the steadiness and structure of the building is connected to the very earth itself. So through the structure, through the steadiness of the ground underneath your feet, connect into the ground, into the earth. And then feel that steadiness, feel that support, that ground, and that is much a very different quality and allow that quality now to naturally rise up through you. It's not pushing you up, but more like water in a plant is just naturally rising through you, allowing you to be more steady, more supported and more supportive, more nourished all the way through. Okay, lovely feeling. So for a moment, just bring your attention now to a sense of the heavens and a sense of the earth and a sense of you in between the two. And connected, we've done a little bit of work just then, connecting into the two. But notice whether you still have any tendency to rise up or more of a sense of being a bit heavier on the ground. Do you have a sense of being more one way or more the other way? Just take a moment to notice that. Okay, at the moment I've got a little bit of a rising up going on. I'm going to need to focus on grounding a bit more. So what we can do is have a sense of, pardon me, it gets my digestion going this. Um, we can have more of a sense of what we need. So if you are feeling like there's a bit more energy up here, uh, and you're trying to ground, then encourage your hips to let go, 
your knees to open and soften, your ankles to open and soften, and your feet to really spread out onto the ground. Feel a sense of that steady earth underneath you and that steadiness coming into you, almost like the body parts, the feet, then the ankles, then the lower leg, being like little magnets, just stacking up and connecting together. Just being connected, settling, and being more grounded. Now, if before you felt more steady and earthy and like there wasn't so much connection up here, then you can have a sense of that really good feeling of what did, what's the air like around you, first of all, the space in the room around you, and then take your attention out to the space of the air around above where you live or are at the moment, and then have a sense of the very space above and that openness and, and expansion the light that is there um, uh, in our solar system. We have the sun, but there's also the stars. There's also a feeling in general of space and the movement between spaces. Uh, and that sort of quality, you can just allow to feel opening up through you. There we go. So finding your level now, Where's your level of balance? If I just talked about one or the other and it just brought you a little bit out of yours, just bring yourself into a mirror. Okay, we're going to do an up and down movement, but we're not going to do exactly the same as Cliff does with this simple one. We're going to do a bit of a, bit of a twist on it, but literally a bit of a twist. So we're going to do bring the arms out to the side, and then as you sink down, the arms just come back in, and your body turns, and if you want to, the hands come up a bit. It's as much as we need to focus on. And then as we stand back up, we come back to the middle, and the arms open up, and then sink back down. Arms come in, stand back up. So this is a basic movement. You're just going up and down. But as you're coming down, you just turn. You're staying in the center. And have a feeling of the ground underneath you that you're pushing up from. We're nearly finished, trust me. And then coming back down to the ground. And if you feel you need the heavens, the heavens are just opening you up and then letting you down gently. You can now use this movement with whichever you need the most. Opening up and floating or sinking into the ground. Pushing up from the ground or relaxing from the heavens. Okay, now I'm gonna let you carry that on in your own time. We have to finish up now. So the last thing I'm going to do before we go to our final poll is to finish off with just a little connection into the group again. So whoever's with us still, I hope you've been able to stay for the whole class. Let's just take a moment again. <sighs> come back to our standing, come back to our sense of being here with this lovely amount of exercises that we've done this time. We're going to check back in with a poll how we've been feeling in a moment. Before we do, let's just stand in this circle again. So bring your attention inside. Imagine people coming from either side of you all the way around in a lovely circle. Now maybe there's some people who had to leave the class early, but let's still keep a sense of them in the circle. People who have been to the class before, people who will come another time, all here. And just have a moment of being thankful for the class, thankful for the movements, thankful for each other being here, and thankful for ourselves in joining in. And this act of expression is a quality of the liver energy. And it's a very beautiful quality. And 
active expression, thankfulness, a kindness. This is something we have in today's class, and thank you very much. Now we'll just quickly go to the poll and see how you're feeling now. So we're going to, now I think it's right at the, uh, how do you feel now? That's the one. So let's just put this up. Are you feeling more balanced? About the same, or a little bit less balanced, which can happen. And wow, so far it's 99% of people answering are more balanced. It's so beautiful to hear. <laughs> it's been lovely to work with you all uh, and to join in today. I really hope you have a beautiful week. Um, enjoy the very turnings of beginnings to spring. And Cliff will be back with you next week. Enjoy. Lots of love to you all. And we're going to say, oh, look at all these hearts. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kat, to all of the help in the chat and with all the polls and everything. You're welcome. Cheerio, everyone. Let's end the session now. Goodbye. <laughs>